very good morning to all of you. It's good to be back. The last time I stood here and gave a talk, same room, uh, two years ago during Camp Boot Up. Uh, back then, the whole room was filled with 14-year-olds who were uh, trying to find out what is it like to take on the subject called computing O-levels. All right, uh, I've been in Zhonghua Secondary School. This is my uh, 18th year. Right, it is my first school after NIE, uh, after teacher's training, and, and I've been there ever since. Okay, uh, my talk outline, I will go through some background information about my school and what we are doing, uh, what a typical lesson structure looks like when I conduct my Computing O classes, and some of the lessons that we have been learning through over the past, uh, I would say, four years to be exact. Okay. So in short, I want to cover uh, how does all this work, how does Python work in our school, how does computational thinking work in our school, what are we doing to educate our students. Okay, first, uh, you go to our school website, you will see this very busy slide. Okay, a lot of photos, a lot of uh, uh, pictorial graphics, and uh, there are a lot of things going on in my school, very busy. Okay, but let me just give some background information about the school. Uh, 1911, very important year. That was the year Imperial China became the Republic of China. And after that, uh, as they said, uh, all hell broke loose. But for us, right, uh, the significant thing is uh, the lead figure in that uh, episode, Dr. Sun Yat-sen, he made a visit to Singapore just before the uh, mid-autumn festival. And he was here to thank all his supporters and uh, fundraisers. And it was during a fundraising party, uh, during the Mid-Autumn Festival, somebody asked him if it's a good idea to start a school for girls in Singapore. And he gave his unanimous support, and the rest is history. So uh, my school started off as a girls' school, and they took them in at about maybe six, seven years old. And as time grew by, they grew bigger and taller. And then they had to come up with a secondary school. And as time grew go by, they started to have more forward thinking they started to recruit them into a teacher's program for girls to learn uh, the Chinese medium subjects. But uh, let me fast forward quickly. Uh, due to uh, population changes all right, in our country, 1984, my school becomes co-ed. So for the first time, they take, a f take guys in. And then 1996, we become autonomous. What this basically means is we get more money from the government so we can do more things. And what other things? We started to embark in an arts and a science niche. Right? So um, STEM education is uh, quite a big thing in my school and so is arts. In fact, we have one whole block dedicated for all the teaching in fine arts, teaching and learning in fine arts. And then 2011, we turn one century old. And uh, what do we do there? Uh, we try to break the Guinness record for the largest number of paper aeroplanes launched at one go. I think it was about 1,000 plus pieces. But what I'm trying to show you here is that right from the start, back in 1911, uh, there's this cultural philosophy in my school to be always forward thinking. Okay? And 2011, right, that little episode where I was heavily involved in, I had to figure out a way how to teach the 1,000 plus students and parents and alumni and uh, uh, various other stakeholders to build an aeroplane quickly in less than three minutes and at the sound of go, launch all of them. So that was where some ideas in algorithmic thinking started coming in. Okay, some timeline matters in uh, our computing journey. Now, 21.4, our head of maths department uh, decides to bring in Lego robotics to excite the secondary one students. And the head of IT, my boss, also decided to join in. And back in those days, uh, there was this thing called Code for Fun. So we decided to latch on and introduce them to Scratch Animation Programming, but with an emphasis on mathematics. And at the later part of the year, MOE, the Ministry of Education, announces the Computing O-Level subject. All right, and uh, yours truly here decides to volunteer as one of the teachers. And so in 21-5, the, the students are now one year older and they get a second dose of Code for Fun, but this time the Scratch programming is skewed towards science. Right? So they get to apply physics, they get to apply chemistry uh, knowledge into their Scratch programming. And of course, uh, I embark on the 
11-month program under Professor Ben Leong from NUS SOC, okay, which I think we are many of you in this room who have also gone through this program. I'll talk a bit about that later. And then in 21-6, my uh, co-conspirator, I don't, he's not in the room now with me, all right, he, it's his turn to go through the 11 month of, uh, either you can look at it as suffering or challenging, I don't know. All right. Uh, and then, here comes the big one. We have to introduce the subject now to the subject streaming. Because at secondary two, students are required to choose the subjects that they wish to take on for their O-levels. All right, and... It was a very good thing because uh, Professor Ben Leong goes all out to support us with this thing called Camp Boot Up. And that was what I was alluding to earlier. Because uh, many of us were called in to help. And I remember giving a 15-minute talk on Python uh, for loop right, to a whole uh, auditorium filled with 14-year-old students. For, for many of them, first time uh, doing Python programming. And I'm happy to tell you that uh, that first run by NUS uh, was preceded by a second run and a third run, uh, continuously done by my school. All right, so we decided to continue this because we find that it is a very good introductory platform to help students understand uh, more about Python. Okay, and uh, yeah, and I also continue to get very good support from Prof Ben Leong's crew when I run the camp boot up in my school. And then in 21-7, the first batch of 16 students uh, start off on their journey, all right, in computing O. Okay, looking at the syllabus as prescribed by the Ministry of Education, these are the four big modules that uh, students in computing O have to go through. And if you ask the question, so where does Python fit in this uh, grand scheme of things? Well, very obvious, in module four in programming, they have to do quite a bit of Python. But I took a good look at this before it was launched in late 2016, and I said, you know, if I follow the scheme of work specified by MOE, a student will not do Python until somewhere in mid-April. So from January to mid-April, they'll be learning nothing but theory and theory and more theory, and that will definitely drive the poor student to tears, and it will kill the subject right at the on start. So I looked in and I discovered that actually I can introduce Python in the various other modules. Okay? And one of the ones that I love very much is the first one, where the first lesson is they get to see what a computer architecture looks like, the input process output model, all right, where you have the input devices, the processor, and the output devices. And uh, from there, we came up with the idea of uh, going in to teach them the defined statement in Python, actually, uh, as a means of uh, putting it into practice. Okay, let's look at the exam. Every student is concerned about this. Every parent is concerned about this. In fact, I was showing this slide last Friday when we had our secondary two students subject uh, parents meeting where they had to do their, where we introduced all the subjects to them. Now, very obviously, in the lab-based practical exam, for two hours and 30 minutes, they have to answer four questions. And in these four questions, uh, two, three, and four are about Python, and question one is about Excel. Okay, so there you are. They have to sweat it out here with their Python program. Now, for the written paper, uh, we have also found ways to include Python in. For example, we give them short code snippets where they have to either debug them or to uh, answer some interesting questions about them. Okay, uh, I've done things like uh, code tracing okay, in uh, the first uh, in paper one where the theory component is done. All right, so yes, uh, they are doing a lot of Python both in their daily uh, classes and also in the exam. Okay, so what happens in the classroom? Now, uh, the way I look at it is uh, these students of this age, they need to be engaged, all right? Uh, multiple sensory engagement, the more the better, all right? Uh, it is kind of unfortunate that they cannot sit still anymore for more than five minutes to listen to you. All right. Anything more than five minutes, they are either slumped down with a head flat on the table or they are up to some other forms of mischief like taking out their handphones, you know, looking, staring down and doing their own thing. All right. So uh, I've learned quite a bit from what they've done in the UK. Uh, they, they're using things like unplugged activities where I make them move around a lot, make them talk to each other, make them do all kinds of things uh, in order to 
go through with them the theory behind the lesson I'm trying to cover. All right, so uh, based on the scheme of work, based on the topic or the subtopics, I have to select and unplug the activity. And then uh, based on the theory, the concept, or whatever is covered in the book, and also maybe sometimes I will look for articles in the web or, or in the trade press or whatever and share it with them. Now talking about the book, we have a very exciting book. Uh, we have one of the fewest, few subjects that students do in O levels where the textbook is online. All right, it's done in a PDF format, they can download it, they can put it on their mobile phones, they can read it on their tablet, whatever. But even then, uh, after two years, right, I'm kind of sad to say uh, a lot of them still do not have the good habit of reading. Right? A lot of them still depend on uh, excitement from the teacher, excitement from the class to, to get through their, their daily work. And then for practice, uh, they get to do a lot of Python programming in my class. And I use Python as a form of uh, letting them express their understanding of the theory behind the topic being taught. And of course, uh, our school, we are very heavy user of cosmology. Okay, it is there that we issue them the learning, the teaching materials. Uh, we give them the notes through cosmology. And of course, the assignments through cosmology. And as I shared last Friday to all the parents present in my school, I told them that I have a very bad habit, probably something which rubbed off from uh, Prof Ben Leong to me. I love to issue assignments on, on Friday's class. Oh, by the way, we meet three times a week, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. So on Friday, I will issue their assignment for the weekend. And um, I'm very nice. I give them the bonus. The bonus has to be done before Saturday, 10 p.m. And the deadline for the assignment is 10, before 10 p.m. on Sunday. So this really, gets, this really riles them up. And uh, yeah, they, they will be off doing their work as soon as, as, soon as class ends. Okay, outside the classroom, what do we do? We have learning journeys, we have uh, industry collaborations, and we also have academic collaborations. Now, learning journeys, we've been uh, very happy working with different parties, and we're very thank grateful for NUS SOC, uh, namely, actually, uh, Prof. Ben Leong and Prof. Leong's uh, groups, who have hosted us for quite a few occasions. And we also had uh, very good parent support who was uh, in Bank of America, Merrill Lynch. And uh, they came to us and offered to bring our students to see how computing, how Python programming even is used in real life in their bank. So our students had a good grand tour of their, uh, their help centre, okay, where they get to see all those huge screens as though they are in some kind of a war room of the Pentagon. You know? So they see people operating 24 hours and they see them collaborating with their colleagues all around the world. And uh, this one, this one is very interesting, uh, Nanyang Junior College. Uh, it is supposed to happen in Term 3 this year. And what we thought good was we wanted our students to see what's coming next. All right? And having said this, uh, said, I don't know whether any MOE ministry people are present in the auditorium. Uh, back in 2017, we had a very serious concern because after O levels, many of them want to proceed to an A level education and many of them qualify for junior college. Back in 2017, uh, when the parents asked me, so uh, how many JCs have A-level computing? I had to embarrassingly hold up my hand like this. Okay? But uh, as of 2019, when the parents asked again uh, last week, uh, I could proudly put up two hands now. Okay? Yeah. And the good thing is uh, this junior college, Nanyang Junior College, which is just down the road from where my school is, right? Uh, surprisingly, this year they offered computing A-levels. So we're very happy about that. And uh, my students are already looking forward to making their next journey over here. So uh, in order to help them paint a more realistic view of their future, uh, we've collaborated with them to let them sit in on an A-level class in uh, computing. All right, so they can see what they are getting themselves into. Uh, okay. All right, industry collaboration. What happened here is Bank of America, they, they want to also get involved in uh, computing for students. So we embarked on them on a program where once a week, one of their project leaders come over and coach a small crew of my students to develop a real world application using Python. Okay. And... Uh, this thing went on for about eight weeks and at the end of the day, they produced a product that was uh, 
applied to one of their uh, community service projects for the bank. Okay. Now, for academic collaboration, this one we're very happy. We've been working with NIE where we let them come in and do some research where our students act as the guinea pigs. Okay? And then they go back and they produce their papers and share with us the results. But the other good thing also was uh, we had one of their artificial intelligence researchers come in to, again, use my students as guinea pigs. And this one had something to do with facial recognition technology. Okay, but more specifically, I think it was more with the jaw muscles because they had to perform eating exercises in front of a computer camera. Okay, and they, they collected a lot of data on that. But uh, the benefit for us was uh, my students had a short session on what artificial intelligence is all about. Not in the syllabus, but at least something to stretch their minds. Okay, my last slide. Uh, what have we learned throughout this whole period of four years? Okay, firstly, we discovered that we want to make all this work. Uh, it has to be done through a lot of conscious planning. Okay? Now, when my student chooses the, or rather when my students are trying to choose whether to do computing O or not, uh, uh, we, are, we have designed a lot of things around them. All right? As I shared before, they have one year of Lego uh, robotics, two years of code for fun where they see how some programming can be done using a fun product like Scratch and apply it to mathematics and science. And lately, we also included the BBC Microbit thanks to IMDA. Uh, but this one is applied to the design and technology classes where they do some maker work but using the Microbit itself. And then the big one is Chem Boot Up where they really see for themselves how I run the class for computing. And then from there, they build up their passion, they build up their interests, and I like this one, their parental guidance. See, uh, this year for the first time, right, the students who registered, or rather the students who walked in at the last minute for, for the Camp Boot Up, exceeded the number of students who pre-registered with me when I announced Camp Boot Up one month ago. And why was this? was because uh, after the parents heard the talk during the, the last Friday's meeting, some of them came down to me and asked me, uh, do you still got a place? I want my son or my daughter to join in. All right, so I had a lot of walk-ins. Okay, so finally they decide, they take their final exams at the end of this year and they come and apply. But uh, for, as far as the school is concerned, we do have a conscious policy here that they need a minimum B4 score for mathematics if they want to get into computing. Okay? Uh, I do not have or know of any uh, intelligence tests out there that can tell a child or the parent that, yeah, your child is suited to do computing. All right, we can only use a proxy uh, thing like B4 for mathematics all right, to let them come in. So once they come in, then they form the next class and off we go. Okay, uh, can boot up. This is what the class looked like this week, Monday, uh, I had 13 applicants. They came in and then they had a go. And this one uh, is the same program that uh, NUS SOC gave to us uh, back in 2016. And uh, what's good here is that I get to engage the use of my current set of students who are doing computing O to assist me to run this program. Because if I try to run this by myself, uh, as they say, La, you're going to die if you try to do it. Okay, so this is just some advice I have for, for schools that intend to use some kind of marketing mechanism to uh, get their students interested. Yeah, so I, I've been using this model where the current set of students, having gone through Camp Boot Up themselves the previous year, and having at least six months of uh, Python programming experience under them, come in and become uh, senior, assistant, senior tutor assistants to their, to their peers, their colleagues, their, their juniors, okay? Yeah. <clears throat> and last but not least, I come back to this very busy picture. Now, over the years, what's been happening is you can see these red lines radiating out and they're all coming out from my department, uh, robotics and computing under the IT department. And what's happened is that we are beginning to integrate right, the programs done by other areas in our school with some form of computing or computational thinking. Okay? Now, this one here, I'm very proud of because uh, it involved my current batch of students. They are currently getting ready for their O-level exams. Now, over here, uh, they have this uh, environmental conscious programs. 
And what happened was, the group that was doing the project, right, they were trying to help the elderly prevent food wastage. And they came up with an old school way of using a 3 by 5 cut and writing the expiry date of a packet of food and leaving it there. All right, so you depend on the person's uh, alertness to go and look at that cut to see when the food expires so they can consume it quickly. And my principal came to me one day and says, hey, help them. Uh. Very old school, uh, the cut. People, if they don't read the cut, then the food will go wasted. So I gave an assignment to my 16 students and says, use the micro bit and come up with something to help this uh, group of people. And they came up with an idea of making a countdown timer, all right, where you can input the date, and then from there, the system will count down. And once it reaches like maybe a few hours before the due date for the food, it will start making noise, flashing colours and all that, so that you will catch the attention of the person. All right? I don't know. This same thing uh, can actually be used to make bombs. Right? So uh, that one, I told them, I told them computing is neutral. You know? It's up to you how you use it later on in life. Okay. Yeah. So we've managed to uh, try our best to integrate into all the other areas of our school. And again, this required uh, leadership at the highest levels to get uh, the staff to work together. Okay. Next, let's talk about teaching theory challenges. Uh, we are a heavy user of cosmology. And what we've found is that because of the gamification uh, feature in cosmology, uh, our students love it. All right, and I put all of them up on the list. I don't put the top 10 or the top 20 or whatever. I put all of them up. So from here, they can immediately see where they stand. All right, they can immediately see whether uh, you know, they, are, they are moving fast or slow or whatever. All right, and uh, the good thing about cosmology is that it has changed the way that they look at their assignments in school. Okay, back in 21-4, uh, the Middle East invented something called asymmetric warfare. You can go and Google it and look at it. Okay? Uh, in 2017, I started to appreciate what asymmetric marking looks like. Okay? And what this means is that on Sunday at about 9 p.m., I will start getting WhatsApp messages. Uh, people ask me, a teacher, how to do this? Uh, my program cannot work uh, and all that. Uh, help me to debug. Uh. Yeah. So I, I keep getting all this now. You see. But I guess I shared with them, uh, this is kind of real life trying to expose them to real life working uh, where there's a deadline and if you don't meet the deadline there will be consequences all right and yeah so they suffer i kind of suffer too okay until maybe one fine day ai comes in i don't have to suffer <laughs> yeah okay uh next this one is a bit disturbing let me magnify it a bit okay this is a chart showing the results of their exams. Okay, it's a distribution of the grades from A1 to F9. Uh, the blue line, the blue line makes any teacher very happy because you can see that the skew is towards distinctions. And that happened last year after they took their finals. The orange line is a bit disturbing. You can see now that the skew has shifted. And this is a uh, result of the mid-year exams this year. Same group of students, 16 of them. Okay? So in your mind is, what has changed? Well, I can share with you that last year, all the way through the whole year, they were enthusiastic people. All right? uh, class starts at 10, 9.55, they are outside the door banging on it, trying to get in. And here I am trying to rush to keep up with them. All right? Class ends at 11, I'm trying to chase them out, they refuse. They are still banging away code on the laptop. All right? And I, I keep telling them, please, please, don't get me into trouble, you know, because the next teacher will complain to the principal and say, why are they you know, stuck in computing and not coming for social studies? I'm just using an example. Huh? Nothing personal there. But this year, when they took their mid-year exams, all right, for some reason, the grades shifted. Because I think, for one thing, uh, they know the O-levels is just around the corner. And every other subject has been banging them on the head that, you know, you better do well, you better do well, you better do You know, you keep nagging them on this, and very soon they start to prioritise. And somehow English, somehow mathematics, somehow chemistry gets more time than computing. Okay, so this is the kind of challenge that uh, subjects like ours, applied sciences, applied topics, will have to uh, meet up and face up with. 
do I have a strategy to deal with it? Uh, I'm still thinking through what to do with it. Should be ready in the next few weeks. Okay, last one, real world challenges. I hope there are people here in the ministry because I want to show you something very interesting. Uh, we talked about the area of a circle just now. Okay, Now, as far as the O-level students are concerned, uh, uh, I, I am not uh, shy to tell you that this line of code is perfectly acceptable. Okay, this line of code is perfectly acceptable as far as the O-level are concerned. Okay, they put this in, they will get their marks. But somehow, uh, the second block here, this was how we were trained as teachers under Prof. Ben Leong. Okay, because there is modularity, there is a decomposition, there is separation of fun functions. Okay, and this doesn't bode well with the current way the students are expected to perform in the O-levels. All right? And we have made representation to ministry that that should change. Okay, because why? I'm alluding to the next part now, the third block of code. Now, many of you recognize this as object-oriented computing. Style of programming, yes. But what we discovered when we brought them out to Bank of America, when the guy came in to start coaching them on writing real-world stuff, they were shown this. And many of them suddenly died of shock. They said, huh? Did I sign up for this? Okay. Now, and uh, I, I mean, I had to be honest with them. I said, yeah, yeah, you will learn this provided you do A-level computing. And this will only be taught like somewhere near the end, nearing your A-levels, then you will see this. Uh, kind of a bit too late, uh, you know. Yeah, so there is an issue here which we need to address as far as the syllabus is concerned. Something that, you know, has to be tweaked in order to help them uh, see that what they are learning is aligned with what really happens in the real world. Okay, all right, so with that, I come to the end of my talk. If you have any questions, happy to take them.